All right, here we are with another meta machine thing, another humble, humble proc gen, humble proc gen, proc gen thing. It's not really a script. Uh, it wasn't a script last time. It's not a script this time. I don't have a script. Uh, but this is all geometry nodes stuff. Well, mostly geometry nodes and modifiers is again a, a stack of geometry nodes and, and uh, traditional modifiers. And uh, you might be thinking, well, this doesn't look too impressive. You know, you've got some spinning stuff. Um, but keep in mind that these are actually working. They're working. It all works. And uh, it's all driven by this gear and everything meshes properly and lines up. And of course, this isn't like anything new. All this stuff is, you can do all this with drivers, which is how I did it. This is all, it's all drivers. Let's see, uh, open drivers editor. And if we say all, yeah, so you can see there's just a whole bunch of drivers that are driving these with a uh, specific ratio to the driving gear. And then the driving gear is driven with this here. Let's slow this down a little bit so it's not quite so frenetic. There we go. Uh, so the drivers aren't the, the cool thing. The cool thing is that all of these gears are made from geometry nodes. So this is this thing right here. That is the whole thing. It's got one tooth, it's got one edge, it's got the little bevel on the inside, and then uh, the I've got it mirrored, so it's mirrored vertically, and then I've got a geometry nodes thing saying how many teeth you want, and you can just adjust that to however many you want. You can do it dynamically, you can animate this, whatever. And, uh, and then you've got a toothed gear with exactly the number of teeth that you're interested in. And of course, you can do this for other things. You can, uh, you can do this for the this little spiky thing, it's, uh, spline, and same thing. It's just a little piece that has been modified with the solidify, and then I've got a trim X spaces. Oh, look at that in a minute. Um, it's not actually necessary for this one. I could have done it in the opposite order, but. And then the seamless rotation is the thing that, that does it. So you can seamless rotation however many you want. And then this is the same thing. It's just mirrored over in the opposite way. So you've got two pieces and, uh, and they mesh together. So, and same thing with this one. This is just a little piece. And uh, so you can really easily make these, these rotary parts and they all, they all mesh together nicely and they don't, cause any problems for the rest of your geometry stuff. Uh, so that's how I made all this, all these gears, all these pieces. These are actually all, the, they're, uh, they're all the same, the same base mesh. So link, object data, all these are the same, they're all the same base mesh. And it's a very small base mesh, right? It's just a half of a half of a gear tooth, just the, the one upper half. And, uh, you might be thinking, well, this is really easy to do, right? Like, why would you need a, a whole geometry nodes thing for this? And the reason is because uh, gear teeth have to mesh properly for it to look right. So, you know, this whole thing has to, this whole thing here has to, uh, has to actually mesh properly. And so when you change the number of teeth, you can't just squish them so that the gear is the same size and they're narrower because then they won't mesh properly. So you have to actually change the size of the gear. And as you noticed, if you change this number, the gear gets bigger, but the tooth spacing stays exactly the same. And the reason it does that is because the origin of the part is right here on the uh, x-axis line engagement, the, the mean engagement point. So the line that goes through the x-axis of the origin of the geometry will be the line that stays the same distance apart. So the parts will get kind of squished or kind of stretched if they're off that line, but if they're on that line, they will they'll stay the same spacing. So that's a special thing about the seamless rotation. It keeps the geometry uh, undeformed along the center line of the x-axis.
and uh, I could add some options in here to toggle which axis or whatever, but it's straightforward enough to just do it along the x axis. So that's fine. Um, so that's the that's the gear stuff. Uh, you saw the the kind of chevron tooth gear and these gears, and you could do whatever kind of gear you want in uh, spiral gears or anything. Uh, and I've done a few of those over here. Here's like a crown gear. Um, and uh, again, pretty simple, just one tooth. And uh, it maintains all the colors, all the, the materials. So you can assign your materials really easily. It's not like the, um, the spin or the screw modifier. I know uh, I like to use the screw modifier a lot for some of these things. Like these are all screw modifier parts. Uh, so that's another really handy thing. The screw modifier is, is uh, you know, it does a lot of, of work, but um, it doesn't allow you to set materials per vertex or whatever, because materials can only be assigned to faces, not to vertices or edges. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, you can't make multiple parts. So like these, I wanted to have a single part, but I actually had to split them out so that I could have separate materials for these two, two objects. Uh, so this doesn't, uh, the seamless rotation doesn't do that. You can assign materials to the parts. You can see this has got two materials and it's all on the right pieces. So that's handy and, uh, works like you'd want it to. Uh, another thing you can do with those is you can do, um, stuff like this where you've got a little bit more complicated stuff. You've got some sort of, um, I've got a tiling X points thing, so it makes some, some points on some underlying geometry. This is what the geometry looks like. And then it um, trims it down. It remeshes it. You know, it does some, some modifier stuff, decimate, does a Boolean to trim it down vertically. It looks like, uh, well, horizontally too, so that it tiles properly. And then I've got that trim X spaces uh, modifier. We'll look at that a little later and seamless rotation again. So that rotates. And you can, again, you know, make this bigger or smaller, and it's still all tiles seamlessly and uh, doesn't doesn't cause any problems. So you could make, you know, big old break disc or whatever. And uh, if you don't like that setup, you can always change the seed and get a different one. You know, maybe that looks better for you, whatever. So, uh, so that is handy. And for making, you know, mechanical parts and things, you can also just do the greebles. You could do like a greeble geometry nodes and then tile it around in a circle uh, if you wanted to have something where it had a mechanical regularity but with some randomization to it like this. And uh, that all works properly. It also does, I've also got uh, one of these normal circular array modifiers and that's, uh, there's a tutorial for that I think in the Blender Studio uh, for how to do that. So that's that's not new. But this is a, this is a, a stack of the uh, all right, so it's got a seamless rotation where it rotates this part around in a circle and then does a solidify where it thickens it and then uh, bevels it and then does a second geometry nodes where it makes a circular array. So you can change the number of items in the circular array as well as changing the number of uh, points on the each little bezel or whatever those are, inset things. And uh, this works the same way too. It's got a geometry node with a combined with object. Just takes a, a plane and combines it in and then makes a circular array so you can you know, change the number of spokes on the wheel. Should probably change this back down. That makes it handy. You can use the same, so it's the same, basically the same modifiers all the time here. And then I've got some decimate and remesh to, to merge it all into one kind of smooth object so it looks like it was cast or something. Uh, so those are the use cases. Uh, let's see, some other gears. Did some other gears here. These are just, you know, other gear shapes. But uh, just give you an example of how they look, what kind of things you can do with this. Uh, I'm sure there's other stuff I am going to use these for, but for now, this is the, you know, this is the example of the use cases. And uh, yeah, so let's get into the geometry nodes themselves. Let's take a look at. Seamless rotation, because that's the main thing. Seamless rotation is this, the main workhorse. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So what it does is you've got some geometry that it that comes in. 
and uh, you know how many pieces you want and if you want to smooth and merge it and uh, if you turn smooth and merge off then it doesn't smooth it and it doesn't merge it imagine that uh, I usually leave it on the default is for it to be on because uh, it works better that way I think so um, let's see here let's uh, unrotate this kind of get it off by itself there so uh, this is the base geometry that's the geometry you put in and uh, the way this works is that the x-axis faces need to match up well they don't need to match I mean if you, you know you can do this and it'll it'll still do the thing but they won't merge properly so the idea is that you're going to have something where the x faces match up <coughs> excuse me the x faces match up and they are uh, flat so they don't have anything sticking out because it uses the x dimension you can see there it offsets it right so it uses the x dimension um, to set the to do all the math basically uh, so if you wanted to have a bunch of pieces that are kind of floating in space next to each other or something, um, you can just duplicate a point, and, uh, and now they're all floating off next to each other. And that will, again, uh, maintain, that distance will maintain no matter how many teeth you, you have. So uh, it's got the statistic, attribute statistic. It grabs the X position attribute and pulls out the x position from the geometry does a min max subtracts them from each other oops don't clamp it and uh, then multiplies that by the number of pieces so that's the number of, uh, of teeth that you want around so it's basically the the total x dimension if you added up all the pieces like a, like with an array and then it divides that by uh, 2 pi so that it gets the circumference or the radius and uh, then it takes that and sets that as a y offset. So it does a transform on the geometry, which is just the geometry that comes in. And that's the y offset. So here we can see uh, if this changes, it changes the, the y offset of, of everything. Offset. Okay, so it starts off here, does a y offset, scoots it out along the, the y axis. So you want the outside of your thing to be along the y axis positive y makes it go out and then x axis is the repeating axis basically and uh, of course you could change it so that like I said you could uh, have an option so that it switches the axes all around but this straightforward works uh, so then it captures the the position of the geometry at this stage and then it sets all the uh, X positions to zero so captures it sets all the points to zero so it flattens it out basically and then it rotates the position based on the Y value and the and then uh, multiplies or divides it divides the the Y value by the total X distance times 2 pi so that you convert basically convert x position into rotation and that's how it gets this nice rotation so that everything is smoothly rotated around I should delete this point uh, even when it's really small it still has perfectly smooth rotation because it is actually rotating it so it does a vector rotation on each individual position based on the captured attribute X position and uh, just divides that by the, the total distance that's supposed to be and that gives you the rotation that you need to set the position then so that gives you one wedge basically turns turns this square version into this pi wedge kind of version um, and from there it's just basically a very straightforward uh, does mesh line with the number of count or number of vertices equal to the number of pieces that you set here in the number of pieces thing. Uh, so you can see, oh, so you can see how this changes the wedge shape as it gets further and further away, it gets more and more square, and you can get it to be all weird shaped if you want. 
uh, with only one piece, uh, which could be handy if you just want to take like a long strip of something and wrap it around in a circle really quickly. This will do that for you, and it'll do it seamlessly. So you don't need like a curve and then a you know set the track curve modifier or whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, a curve deform modifier. You can just use the, the seamless rotation thing for one piece. Uh, you can also do. I think you could do it just by saying like adding an array, and then crank this up. Yeah, so you could you could add an array and then use a one piece geometry node seamless rotation thing. Uh, it does the same thing. Um, so that that could be handy if you want to have like a, a thing where you apply this and then you've got all these teeth and you want one of them to be broken or something you know so you can do that and now you've got this one tooth that's broken off uh, could be handy I don't know you maybe you don't want to do that uh, but that's how you would do that is by using one piece in this seamless rotation thing all right, let's undo all this so that we uh, you know, don't need the array. Number of pieces up to something reasonable. Okay, so uh, you set your your mesh line, and then you just instance the geometry on the points, and you rotate it based on the number of pieces. So this is you know the index multiplied by six, two pi, and then divided by the number of pieces uh, combined is the z rotation of the instance. And then I realize the instances if you want to realize them. So I've got a switch in here with the smooth and merge, and that's what that's what that does. It basically, if you tell it to smooth and merge, then it realizes them, sets shade to smooth, merge by distance by very small distance, and then uh, outputs that. Well, it doesn't output it right now. There, and outputs it. So uh, so that's how that works. Very uh, very straightforward geometry node setup doesn't have a bunch of branching or fancy stuff it's really basic stuff but um, very handy for making this kind of geometry so let's look at next let's look at the X trim uh, X trim is even simpler if possible than the seamless rotation trim X faces it'll all fit on one screen here you can see it all at once so it takes the uh, geometry, finds the uh, face with the minimum and maximum, it finds the x position value of the minimum and maximum, the minimum and maximum x position value of the faces. And then if the geometry, if the face, if any face is equal to either the maximum or the minimum, it deletes it. And that's it. So uh, this is very straightforward. All it does is, is delete that face. And the reason you want that is if you have something where you've done a Boolean. So you're looking inside this object, and it's got a Boolean. So you need a watertight object to do the Boolean. But then you want to use the uh, seamless rotation on it without those faces in between. Because if you've got the faces, well, here, I'll just turn this off. You can see there's faces in there, and there's actually two faces in there. And then when you merge it, it's going to get one or maybe two, and it's going to be real messy. So you don't want those faces sticking in there. So instead, you can, uh, you've can you got trim X faces in there, and that trims those off so that it doesn't do that anymore. Let's turn off the rotation so you can see more easily what we're dealing with. There we go. So you can see the, the face on this end is trimmed off. You can turn off the trim X faces. Then it's still got a face there because of the Boolean. So the Boolean trims that off, and then you can use trim X faces to clean that up so that when you tile it, it all merges and looks nice. Um, one of the problems I have though is that these don't actually, so the remesh doesn't, you can see like the faces here, doesn't actually get exactly, exactly right. So I think if I was going to redo this, I would do the Boolean maybe afterward after the remesh or or do the remesh after the boolean so that it it remesh the whole thing as one unit instead of remeshing each each segment uh, I like having it remesh each segment but it doesn't um, doesn't clean up nicely that way so anyway 
or maybe I just don't remesh it at all. Oh no, you need to remesh it to, to get all these to merge together because these are all a whole bunch of individual. Okay, so let's look at titling exploits. So this is a little complicated, um, not super duper complicated, but it's a little complicated. Um, basically, it takes it's a, a basically it's a, a distribute points on faces and then instance geometry setup. So it distributes the points on faces, and then it takes those points and instances the uh, geometry from uh, whatever object you want to you want to instance on there, and uh, realizes it and spits it out. So I mean, they, it's straightforward. All this complication in the middle is getting the points to line up so that they tile properly along the x dimension. So uh, uh, let's see. There we go. It's going to look very similar. There's a, a few little changes at the ends, but what those changes do is it makes it to the tiles properly. So let's put this back. Um, and yeah, like I said, it it uses a okay. So it uses a Poisson disk distribution, and then it uses the distance to trim off any of the points that are greater than the distance along the x-axis, that is the edge of the object minus the Poisson distance. But there's a modifier here, there's an overlap offset, there's an offset you can set. So uh, if you modify this offset, it sets to, oh, I think it sets to zero. Yeah, yeah, defaults to zero. But you can trim this this way, or you can trim it down this way. So if you wanted to have a spacing between your, your sets for whatever reason, uh, you can do that. So this basically allows you to trim back uh, the default should be fine, and then um, and then the spacing is the how much spacing you want between each instance. So in this case, I've got it set to about three, two point seven, and you could set it higher, and then they'd be more spaced out. You could set it lower, and they'd overlap more. But for the geometry that I'm working with, uh, two or three, three-ish, is about right. Uh, and so this all, like I said, this all just it's got the ones on the x end, so it takes all the the points and it uh, it deletes all the ones that are more than the spacing uh, on the lower end, and uh, that's the lower end, and then the same one more than spacing on the upper end, so that you don't get otherwise you get this whole pattern repeated fully on both ends. You don't really need that because you're going to be trimming it just so that it it tiles properly. So this is just Basically, this is all just so that it gets the tiling to work. Uh, so, like I said, it's not actually that complicated. It just looks kind of complicated. But this is all, like, this whole thing is one setup. And this whole thing is one setup. And then, uh, so it's got the base points. And then it deletes almost all the points on one end, almost all the points on the other. and just, you know, puts the ones that are going to tile properly. Joins them all together. And then, again, just gives this point. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I've made it way more complicated than it actually is by talking about it for so long, but that is what's going on there. And then again, trim X spaces, seamless rotation, we already went over those, and I think that is it for this set of uh, this set of tools. So um, I guess that's it for the video. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to talk about here? We've got gears, we've got uh, things. What else? No, I guess that's it. I guess that is it. So thanks for joining me. This is Humble Procgen Gears and Rotary Machine Parts and Things. And uh, yeah, I hope you find these useful. I don't think they're going to be quite as useful as the stair one, but if you're building a whole bunch of machine parts and things, it certainly could be. And hopefully at some point I will be able to build some scripts, some, some Python scripts that will automatically generate this kind of gear setup and automatically set all the rotation, the oil rotation drivers and stuff so that you don't have to fiddle with all that. But I uh, figured I'd release these tools. This is all in my GitHub. I'll put a link to there. And if you are interested in leaving comments, you can leave them in the comments of the video, of course, but you could also go to the Blender Artists thread, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well. So... Thank you all again for your attention and for uh, looking at all this stuff, and I hope that you can make something cool out of it. Talk to you later.